Hey everyone, Richard here from Design and Built. In this episode, we're going to be finishing the patrol running gear conversion. So previously, I've already put the patrol diffs under the car. In this episode, we go into detail on driveline angles. We try bolt up the patrol transfer case. We make a custom cross member, and then we actually bolt the patrol steering box to the Land Cruiser chassis. We've got the patrol transfer case, and we've got the patrol adapter. Now this is from barrowtheworld.com. What we have to do is actually fit this into the transfer case. And then we have to send the, uh, the input shaft back. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. Again, you have to tap out a couple of holes. I'm pretty sure it's the same tap holes that I already did for the 80 series transfer case adapter. So patrol transfer case, gotta put this new in input shaft on. So we've got to unbolt that and then bang it in and then we can put the transfer on the car. So old one, new one. So we've got to press this bearing onto that shaft there and put it into this transfer case. Pressing the bearing onto the new input shaft. Okay, so we've got some driveline angle issues putting the patrol transfer case in. So basically the first step is to cut out even more floor, which is this part here, I've sort of marked it. And then we're gonna to have to figure out, um, yeah, whether we can basically fit the patrol driveline in. The problem is the barra is about three kilometers long. So it really, I mean, if I knew I was gonna run patrol transfer, maybe I would have built it a bit differently at the start. But the reality is that all the decisions I made at the start of the build are sort of coming back to haunt me now, including all this front heat exchanger setup. Maybe, you know, maybe I could have gone top mount and gained myself an extra 80 mil. I think uh, front mount radiator is something I definitely want. I really don't want to go rear mount because that, that sort of takes up a heap of space on the tray. Um, but yeah, all the decisions I made at the start of the build are really coming back to haunt me now with this patrol transfer case. And that's just because of the geometry of the output shaft. And we're going to go and see that once we, uh, once we bolt it up and, um, you know, have a look at how, it, how, how the driveline angles are to the H260. So let's go ahead and do that now. And, um, yeah, we'll figure it out. So just test fitted the patrol transfer case with the axles back on and it's not looking extremely good. I think, you know, uh, there's an 18 degree angle between the diff and the transfer as is. It's a really short tail shaft length. Um, I guess, yeah, this is sort of, as I said, this is the limitations of sort of my setup. So really short and then quite a high rise. So it's, um, and I'm sure I'd get some vibration issues. Pretty much can't work and the transfer is sitting at the bottom of the frame rail as well so i can't really just drop the whole powertrain so basically for a uni joint if you double the angle it halves the lifespan so when you look under a stock land cruiser the angle seemed pretty minimal at a guess i'd say less than five degrees and the lifespan would be pretty good i'd imagine so the idea is to keep the uj angle as low as possible to maximize the lifespan i took the measurements off camera and put this table together and listed out a few pros and cons of each option to help you understand my thought process a little bit better. I've got no experience with drive lines whatsoever, so I spoke to a few experts while I was deciding what to do here. When I started measuring everything, I quickly came to the realization that no matter which way I went, I'd have to make a brand new drop cross member to improve the angles a little bit. Option one, use the patrol transfer case. Now the angle would be 90 degrees, which is pretty high. The pros are it's a manual transfer case and you can put some reduction gears in it. One of the advantages of the patrol transfer is there's a handbrake on the back of it, which is supposed to be really reliable. The cons, it's a big angle. And from what I've heard and the experts I spoke to, 20 degrees is really pushing the limit of what's possible. Although I have heard of people running big angles like this. Option two, extend the chassis by 300 mil. The driveline angle would be 11 degrees using the patrol transfer case. Pros would be an increased wheelbase and it would almost become touring spec. I'd have a bit of extra space. I could extend this, the cab or the tray 
and also the cons of this drawing spec wheelbase. So I don't particularly want this for my build, so it's not really an option. Option three, move the motor forward by 200 mil. Now the driveline angle would be around the 13 degree mark. The pros, not not many really. Um, there's a lot of cons, remount rad, top mount, intercooler, custom sump, weight distribution would be a little bit off as well. So not a great option for me. Option four would be to use the 80 series transfer case. Uh, the driveline angle would be 10 degrees. And I already have the transfer case and adapter. The cons of this would be it's an offset angle, so it doesn't improve with weight. So all the other driveline angles would get slightly better as you load up the car. Because this is an offset angle, it would not It would never actually get better. The big disadvantage of running the 80 series transfer is there's no handbrake on the back of it. And my patrol axle doesn't have a handbrake either, so I'm going to have to make a handbrake. Option five is to reshell the diff and move the pumpkin over. Now I worked out I could probably get the angles down to 5 degrees using an 80 series transfer case. The cons of this, custom axles, big fabrication effort. Option 6 would be new trans, transfer case, cross member, etc. I, I mean, I, it's pretty hard to figure out an angle, but I'm sure I could get a little bit better. The cons, it's probably expensive and no ZF 6 speed. Option 7 would be to use a CVJ coupling so I could use a constant velocity joint uh, which handles big angles. The problem is I have to send out stuff to get machined and it's it's not something I can do in in house particularly and it's quite custom and, and bespoke so I don't particularly want to do that. All the options that I've just mentioned were assuming a new drop cross member which puts the engine on a four degree angle it's currently on zero. So I've landed on option four for now, which is use the 80 series transfer case, which has a 10 degree angle. Now I did speak to my driveline expert and he said 10 degrees should be okay. As mentioned, if stock's five degrees, I'm literally doubling it to 10 degrees, which means it'll have a half life. So if I carry around a spare tail shaft and be conscious of my uni, then I don't see a problem with this option. Now, if this option does run into some problems and I'm constantly having to replace unis, then option five, reshell the diff and move the pumpkin over is probably my next best bet. We're looking at the H260 rear diff now. So on an 80 series, the pumpkin would be over further this way. When I say cut and shut the pumpkin, it means we could potentially move this all over, make custom axles and, and make it work. So you can see the 80 series output shaft is over further to the driver's side, which would correspond to the offset pumpkin. On the patrol transfer case, the output shaft is in the middle somewhere, which would correspond to the H260. About an offset angle, we're talking about going diagonally from the driver's side to the passenger side to bridge the gap because that is centered and that is offset. Okay, so I've whipped up a new cross member in CAD. So the reason I've done this is to drop the drive line. So now the engine is going to be on a four degree angle, three and a half to four degree. So I've actually lost a little bit of clearance. I've probably lost um, 20 mil of clearance, but the, the whole actual back of the trans drops about 75 mil so you can see this is a very different design um and the the trans mount will go into here uh so i got this laser cut and cnc folded and you might be thinking oh it's going to be flimsy rich but um i've got these gussets going into here so and then i've got um a little bit of bolt protection on the bottom so i'm going to go ahead and stick this together <laughs>
here's a weld detail on my crossmember. I decided to use a TIG on this because I haven't done it on steel for a while and I like to keep my skills sharp. Probably since the manifold actually, I haven't really done much steel TIGging. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's come out. So this bracket here, I'm just going to wait and confirm the holes are in the right spot before I do some full passes. Uh, and, and this is just designed to stop the thread on the bottom of the mount getting damaged. Finished up with a custom cross member now. So I've added this little box up here and that's because the threads from the trans mount poke up and if I didn't have anything to cover them, they'd get damaged if we clashed on a rock or something like that. And I've cut this outer hole a bigger size so we can get a socket in there. So we are ready to bolt this back on the car. Oh, something I didn't do. Actually, um, I did think about it before I got it laser cut, but I just wasn't sure. So I just waited until afterwards and punched some holes in, but these are just drain holes. You may be wondering why they're only on one side, and that's because the whole cross member is angled, as I mentioned earlier, and everything should just drain to the back. So I've got three drain holes across there. So once we go through bog holes and all that sort of stuff, the, the stuff will drain out the bottom of the cross member. Hopefully they're big enough. If not, I can just punch them bigger later. I've also had to profile a little bit off the back um, just to get the transfer case in. And I guess that's probably a good point I'd like to make. None of my designs are perfect. I try to get them to like 80% and then for the stuff that I don't have in CAD, like the transfer case, pretty good example. I'm happy to plasma cut it out afterwards. And I guess I think that's the fastest way to do it. Don't try and get it perfect in CAD. But just as long as you can use, you know, a welder or a plasma cutter or, you know, angle grinders, then you just get it to a point where you can just finish it off on the car. One more thing, I've just banged some extra MIG welds in the middle just for some extra strength. So it's fusion welded on the outside, MIG welded on the inside, just stitch, but should be all good. I think it's going to be quite a strong cross member. So this is 6mm plate and then I've used some 3mm here. So here's the cross member in its final form bolted up to the car. Now I've got to do a little pro bit of profiling. You can see here that it's pretty close to the sump, so I'll just buzz a little bit out. But um, yeah, I mean it's it's pretty good the way it is. So the whole powertrain has dropped uh, like 75 mil about at the rear, and I haven't actually lost much ground clearance. Maybe 20 mil for this little bit here, but it's all um it's all plated and shouldn't be a problem. So I guess um. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the geometry. It actually bolted right into my existing uh, cross member mounts, which is really cool. Um, I guess there are a few things that I'm actually not happy about, and I'll point them out because um, I'm not perfect, and I do do absolutely make a heap of mistakes. So these bolts are way too close to uh, this gusset here, and they're a pain to do up. So I could make them weld nuts, and it probably wouldn't be a problem, but I'm actually just uh, thinking that I might cut this bit out and then remake it or um, yeah, even even make a new cross member. So the other the other bit that I don't like is these wings could be much lower profile. So I could probably, yeah, bring the profile down by say like 30 mil or something like that and then bring bring these in as well when I do it. So it, it wouldn't be as wide and then I could, uh, yeah, undo and do up the nuts. So that's something I'm thinking about doing. The other thing that I'm going to need to do is seal this off because it would be a nightmare to paint the way it is and I'd just leave steel exposed. So I'm, I think I think what I'd probably do is sort of give it a bit of an angle and then seal it off. So I'm, I'm either thinking I'll make a new cross member or I'll just grind this bit off and, and remake it, which is, you know, may, maybe that's the easiest thing to do or definitely the cheapest way to go. But um, yeah, so I guess the cross member, it's, it's geometrically it's correct, but I'm just not happy with these little wing bits and I could, I could do better. So I'll, I, I will go ahead and do that. Um, I don't know when it's, you know, on the never ending to-do list. One of the main differences between my crossmember and the one that I had on it before, if I haven't already called it out, 
is that this is actually on a four degree angle, which means that the transmission mount won't be under strain. It's gonna be way better for the longevity of the transmission mount. One of the big advantages of the patrol transfer case is the handbrake on the back of the transfer. Now with the 80 series geometrically, I think it's almost near on impossible. I'm sure it's been done before, but I did speak to a few places about it and there's definitely no off-shelf kit available. The H260 that I've got actually doesn't have a handbrake on it at all. You might be wondering what I'm going to do for a handbrake. So these are a 1980s Subaru L series, the, the Leone caliper, and they're a hydromechanical caliper, which means they can be plumbed in like a regular caliper. That's the, uh, the banjo bolt there. But then there's also a mechanical park brake on them. So this is actually a front caliper from a Subaru Leone. Now, I, I have printed off the forum thesis um, and I thought this was going to be a full get out of jail free solution for me, but I think it only works on GQ diffs. I've got GU diffs. So on a GQ, these calipers directly bolt into the cradle and then you can just bolt the cradle to the axle. And I think you've only got to tap one hole and it's a pretty simple solution. Now on a GU, the spacing for the cradle is different to the Leone calipers, uh, which is really, really unfortunate because it means I'm going to have to figure something out. So I guess leave it with me. Now I've explained the handbrake dilemma. Let's go fit the GU steering box. Here's my patrol steering box and the whole spacing and the geometry is different. So we have to put in a new location on the Land Cruiser chassis. So you can see here the remnants of uh, a brace kit that I had. And I'm going to remove this plate and then I'm going to be able to put the patrol box in here. Now, just because of the geometry, it's going to have to mount a little bit more forwards. I designed this plate up. So these are the old Land Cruiser holes, these four here. And then these are the new patrol holes. So we've actually measured this off my friend Lawrence's car who has the steer box uh, already mounted. So the idea is that I'll be able to locate these four holes up onto the old Land Cruiser ones and bolt them in. And then I'll be able to get my hole centers for the patrol box and um, and then be able to drill through with a mag drill. So I've gone and borrowed a mag drill for the day to do the job and put some crush tubes through for the steering box. So I designed up this plate literally just using printouts and, uh, and, and scanning with a 2D scanner. And it's probably taken me 10 iterations to get this in the correct geometry because these, these holes are not perfect, uh, perfectly square and the same with the Land Cruiser ones as well. So um, yeah, there was a fair bit of time that went into this plate. So we've got George here on the mag drill. It, uh, it, it is making this job pretty easy because it's really easy just to punch straight through horizontally and we don't have to line up any drill bits or anything. So thanks mag drill, cool piece of kit. drilled the four new holes and they look really good all the way through so my mag drill wasn't long enough to go through the backside and I didn't film it all but I basically just stepped up my way through the backside um, with smaller drill pieces so I'm going to go ahead and put some crush tube in them now and then I'll be able to grind it all back and weld on this outer brace plate and then uh, yeah we're, we're pretty much done. So that's the patrol steering box on a Land Cruiser. So I'm pretty stoked. All my iterations in CAD and printing off pieces of A4 paper paid off because it worked first shot. So it probably took me 10, as I said, 10 goes on paper before we got it into steel. Some of the advantages of the patrol steering box are that it's stronger and it's less likely to leak and it's and also the steering feel is much lighter than an 80 series. Now I've got all my steering links and my panard. So these are actually a combination of GQ and GU rods. 
Um, I am not sure which ones which. I actually got them from the four-wheel drive shed. They, yeah, they sorted me out. So I think these might be GU rod ends on a GQ rod or something like that. And I've got the rear link as well. So we can actually steer the car again. So that brings us to the end of the patrol diff conversion. I guess it's a hybrid of Land Cruiser and Patrol running gear, mostly Patrol, but then obviously we've got the Land Cruiser transfer case. I need new drive shafts as well, and they're getting made at the moment, so I'll, uh, I'll install that when we put the thing back together. A couple of things I want to show you here. So I actually might need a new intermediate shaft. This one seems a little bit short because we moved the Patrol steering box a little bit further forward. And then the other thing is that I actually reprofiled all the engine mounts to suit the powertrain angle. As I've mentioned before, the powertrain was on a zero degree angle and now it's leaning back on a four degree angle. I didn't want to put any unnecessary strain on the rubber mounts. So I've actually um, profiled the metal and make sure it all um, mates nicely. So it wasn't a huge job, as you're well aware, everything is still tacked together on this car. It, it hasn't been welded off properly yet. So that's all for this episode, guys. In the next episode, we get stuck into the interior and we end up cutting and shutting the dash. If you like this content, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Cheers.